Well, today for my first tutorial, I will talk about simple techniques and an easy workflow to give some life to your 3D models. We're going to create this short scene easily based on existing models. For that, I will go through three softwares, starting with Magica Voxel, which is a free voxeling tool, but I won't talk about modelization in this tutorial. Then we'll go to Mixamo, that's a free online tool for rigging, and finally Cinema 4D. That's where I'll show you how I add various external objects into my scene, for example, a sword, an axe, or a shield. Let's start. I'll begin with opening my voxel scene with Magica Voxel, in which I already created various characters. Thanks to the animation layer tool up there, I can add many models within the same file. So here comes our two challenges. A quick trick, by the way, try to always get some details for the ankles and the knees. That will help your model to bend correctly during the animation part. So you just add a slightly different color, or you add some details there, like a metal ring, for example. OK, now it's time to export all this in OBJ and import them in C4D. We are going to drag and drop the file. Well, don't pay attention to the scale. So first step is to reassign the good texture, which was automatically exported from Magica Voxel. It's a simple PNG file, here. A thing to keep in mind, don't forget to switch off the specular light in C4D. The risk is that your models look a bit too shiny and reflective. Catching light like this isn't something I need here. Like that, now we have the basic color. That's good. Now I'll separate the two models from each other. Well, I exported both characters at once, but I should have isolated them to avoid this step. Anyway, it's quite simple, so let's do it. You just have to select both characters' vertex and invert your selection, then suppress the others. Like this, our two models are now separated, we can go on. I'll simply change the position of the anchor point so that they'll fit the bottom of each other. That will be easier for later. OK, now we can center them and I'll export them one by one in FBX format this time. It will keep both the model and texture. It's very useful for the next steps. OK, so I'll save my first model there. OK. I'll do the same thing for the other one. Well, just erase the first, then export it, and I'll give them a file name. Let's keep the preset at default value. Now let's go to Mixamo. It's a free online tool. Just click on Upload. Go fetch your models one by one, and let's start with the Minotaur. OK. I'll just follow the indication to move the dots in the right place. The knees and the character is rigged. Now we have a good basic rig. Well, we could choose to export it now, just like this, but we'll go a bit further and look for a nice animation, something related to a dual fight. Well, there are many presets in Mixamo, and most of them are free, so just choose the right one. You can even adjust some parts of the animation, like here with the space between the elbows, to avoid any bugs in the model. Well, this one looks nice. Let's try it. Just We'll do the same for a second model. Just find a pose for the dying skeleton. Let's save all this in our folder and just drag and drop them again in C4D. Once again, just no need to tweak the presets. And it's done. 
just a quick animation check okay dies so well the scene seems okay uh, now the minor just scene I finally chose another pose a backflip so we'll be able to put an axe in his hands and I'll regroup all this and rename it just do the same for the scurry Okay, get up now. I'll take all my elements and regroup them. And now I'll copy paste them in the minor to scene. Now I don't need this. This is here. Now I'll make them comfortable within the same scene. So I'll put him here. Just rotate it a bit. Now they are face to face. Just move him a bit more and let's enhance the animation. Okay. So, first thing to do, the skelly falls into the other's feet. So what we'll do here is move him aside, like this. So now he'll fall next to the other one, and not directly at his feet. Let's check, okay. Okay, fine. So what we'll do here, we'll delay the skeleton fall and place it later on in the timeline. He's falling right from the start, but we need him to fall later, when the axe reaches him. So I'll select all the animation keys and move them in the timeline, like this. Just when the Minotaur hit him, we can see the impact there. Now I'll go cutting some weapons in an asset that I've previously made. So let's take a third and maybe an axe just there and let's take a shield too okay that's fine now that's the interesting part because mixamo allows us to export skeletons i mean bones rigs but you can't add accessories whereas in c4d we'll be able to unfold this mixamo rig and find the hand which is supposed to hold the sword Here, I'm unfolding it to the hand, nice. Now I take the sword and slip it there, so I'm able to reset its position and make it fit into the hand. Okay, that could be better, but we'll rearrange the thing and make it fit nicer than that. Okay, so I'll accelerate a bit, just to show you how it works. Let's scale the sword, but not too much. Just reposition it and make it fit into the hand. Okay. Fine. Now let's give him a shield. I'll make sure this is the other hand. Okay, fine. So, same principle. I'll modify its anchor point and center it to avoid any problems. Here it is. Good. It's now assigned to the left hand. We'll just have to rotate it a bit, so now it's in the right bone, it is stuck to the arm, no problem. We can see that when the skeleton falls, all is ok. Same job for the Minotaur, we unfold the bones, we'll fetch the arm, the hand, the right hand, we'll take our axe and slip it and replace it in position and rotation, just where it should be. Ok, now let's rotate it a bit and move it this way, sounds good to me, with the edge to the enemy. So it'll catch the blow, that's good. Ok, I'll stop now and what I'd like to do is to make the shield blown away by the axe, detached from the skeleton's hands. Let's start with the shield. It should be blown away by the axe, so we'll use some simulation tags within C40. We can find them in the simulation menu and click on a rigid body on the shield itself. We'll do the same on the axe, but with a collision tag this time, because it's the axe that will collide with the shield, and the trick is on the shield collision tag. Instead of triggering the simulation from the start, we'll ask it to trigger itself on the first collision detected. Tech. That's fine. Now, when the axe touches the shield, the shield is falling down. 
So now let's add a ground so that the shield doesn't fall down infinitely. I'll put a collision tag on it. So the shield will be stopped instead of falling. Tac. Okay, good. Now I'm done with the shield. Let's do the same with the sword. In fact, we'll put a rigid body tag on that one. And the new trick is, I can't trigger it on a collision because the axe won't touch the sword. And what I'd like is, the skeleton drops his sword when he reaches the ground. For that, we can animate the effects. For now, the simulation starts immediately. But I don't want him to drop it now. So let's uncheck this. I'll find the next frame. Now I can animate it and activate the tag. Now he's dropping the sword right now. Now the timing is perfect, but something's still wrong with the sword. It's slipping on the floor like it's slipping on soap and goes really too far away. That's a bit strange, so let's modify the friction parameter. We'll put it at 90% so the third will slip a bit, but not too much. It stops near the scully. That's a bit more realistic. So now, everything seems good. Just check the scene once or twice to check it out. Okay, fine. Let's get on with the final render. I'll make a very quick and dirty light setting. Let's put a sky object here. I'll change the parameters to a sky in July. Surely sky is good. It's done very quickly. I won't take too much time on this tutorial for that. So now let's put surface light. You can also put a null object in the scene. And just put a name tag on your light. Affect the null to it. Now your light will always look at the null. You can place it wherever you like. This is an easy setup. You don't need to rotate the light every time you move it. Well, let's put another one and put it on the other side of the scene. And just add some shadows. And a first render. Well, that first render is interesting, but, but what we may need is some ambient occlusion to add more shadows to the scene. Okay, now it's slower but better. Here's the final render, once composited within After Effects, with a colored background and a few color corrections. Okay, it's done. I hope you liked this first tutorial and that it wasn't too fast. I also hope you'll excuse my French, so feel free to give me your feedback on that and what you'd like to learn next time. See ya, folks!